Hi, my name is Isaac Carell, and I'm a second year graduate student here at the College of Pharmacy, and I'm working to get my PhD in pharmaceutical sciences. I work under uh, Dr. Navjot Pabla, and our research focuses on acute kidney injury. This year, I participated in the College of Pharmacy's three-minute thesis competition, where I took first place. I was able to move on to the university-wide competition and participate against other colleges' first place winners. And amongst that group, I finished second place. Twenty percent of all hospital patients have or will develop this condition during their stay. And of those afflicted, 30 percent will ultimately die from it. It's not cancer, it's not a superbug, and it's not heart disease. It's acute kidney injury. You would think that a condition so prevalent in our hospitals would have drugs to mitigate the damage or prevent the injury from worsening. However, there currently exist no therapies for acute kidney injury. The only way to treat the condition is to first identify and then limit what is causing the toxic damage to the kidney. But that's not always possible, like in the case where a disease itself is what's causing the injury to the kidney. For these patients, dialysis remains the only option until the kidneys have time to recover. But think about that. You're sitting in your hospital bed with a machine externally performing the functions of your kidneys while you just wait until your doctors can figure out what's going on and regain control of your situation. And that's rarely a quick fix. There's got to be some way we can intervene using a targeted, system-specific, but disease-independent approach. The answer may lie in a place that you might not expect. Bad breath. Now, I'm not talking about your typical morning mouth stink that can be solved by a few brushes, gargles, and spits. I'm talking about chronic halitosis, bad breath that won't ever go away. Researchers analyzed the genetics of individuals afflicted with chronic halitosis and found mutations in a new gene. The protein this gene encodes for is called salin BP1, and in the context of chronic halitosis, it works to break down some of those foul-smelling molecules that exist in and around our mouths. They also reported a high expression of this protein in the kidneys, and this raised my eyebrows because as this protein functions, it can release some very toxic byproducts that can wreak havoc on surrounding tissues. So, my colleagues and I work to limit the amount of naturally produced cell and BP1 in the kidneys to prevent them essentially from hurting themselves. We work primarily in preclinical research, meaning our juvenile treatments still require a lot of maturing before they're ready to be administered to any human patients. This may only be the first step, but by targeting cell and BP1 in the kidneys, we may soon be able to prevent your kidney injury from worsening or protect you against kidney injury in circumstances where it can be expected. The kidneys do so much more for our body than simply filter our blood and generate urine, and contain many nuanced functions that still remain unknown. Unlocking their secrets and figuring out a way to prevent damage from occurring or worsening from a point where it can be identified will limit hospital stays and save lives on a global scale.